is a door-to-door -door salesman. His wife kills herself at the start. Um, yeah. <laughs> Didn't you know that? <laughs> and uh, his, his, uh, his wife kills herself at the start. And uh, he can't handle it. And so he goes off on the road trying to fuck as many women as possible, taking along his little boy who's nine years old with him. And uh, things start to go wrong. And he, he, I don't know, look, you probably read the fucking thing. Or you or not. But anyway, his life goes down the toilet, and um, this is one of his confrontations, or his attempt, uh, attempted seductions. Okay? Okay. Charlotte sits across from Bunny on a calico sofa. Wearing loose-fitting toweling shorts and a pink cotton vest stretched across large pillowy breasts. On the far wall hangs a poster of a self-portrait by Frida Kahlo, dressed as a gypsy and holding a little brown monkey. Bunny squeezes more lotion into Charlotte's hands, kneading them and tugging on her fingers. Its unique healing powers penetrate deep into the skin, leaving your hands feeling supple and blissed out, he says. And he can see, if he adjusts the sight line fractionally, Charlotte's inner thigh muscle jump and spasm in the gaping leg of her shorts. He fingers are bony and strong, and her fingers are bony and strong and lubricated. And as he squeezes and unsqueezes them, he imagines her vagina barely an arm's length away. It's, um, miraculous, says Bunny. I don't doubt it for a second, says Charlotte. Her voice has a super sexy masculinity to it, and Bunny frets for a second, but shortly after realizes the folly in this. If she, if she were a dyke, she, she wouldn't be sitting here letting him do this thing with her hands. And he relaxes and presses his thumb into her open palm and slowly rotates it. They've done actual tests, says Bunny, emphasizing the last word. What kind of tests, says Charlotte, imitating him, mocking him? Scientific one, says Bunny. Hmm, says Charlotte. Yeah, does wonders for the wrists too, he says, moving up and feeling hard, ribbed muscle in her forearms. Charlotte closes her eyes. Sexy lady, says Bunny under his breath. What did you say? Bunny nods at the poster of Frida Kahlo, who looks down at them from under her one bizarre and conjoined out eyebrow with flat, expressionless eyes. In the picture, says Bunny. Bunny registers a hint of condescension in Charlotte's smile. Oh, Frida Kahlo, yes, she's beautiful, isn't she? I think that was painted in the 1940s, she says, looking up at the picture. Bunny thinks he feels a surge of electricity pass through Charlotte's fingers into his, moving through his bones and straight into the base of his spine. He is overwhelmed by a multitude of tantalizing things he can say, but for some reason he says, didn't they have tweezers back then? <laughs> Charlotte's features shift a bit, but in doing so, her face becomes angular and severe. I'm sorry, she says, what do you mean? Bunny holds a finger up to his forehead, and even as he does so, he feels a sense of things unraveling and having lost control. The monobrow, he says, regretting it instantly. The what, says Charlotte? Makes you wonder what her legs look like, he says, before he can stop himself. I'm sorry, I don't follow you, says Charlotte, extracting her hand from Bunny's and staring at him with a fierce disbelief. I can see why the monkey likes her, he says, jamming a knuckle into his mouth. Charlotte leans forward and connects with Bunny's arms. I don't know if you can follow this, but Frida Kahlo was involved in a terrible accident that left her severely handicapped. I think she was hit by a truck, if you must know. Bunny picks up a towel and wipes the excess moisturizer from his hands. He feels disorientated, and he can almost see the words they tumble from his mouth, as if someone else was filling in his speech bubbles. Someone with a deviant love of catastrophe. <laughs> really? Well, to be perfectly honest, I find the picture a little depressing. But what would I know? Still, if she painted it with her foot, then effortlessly and seamlessly Bunny says, Speaking of which, I have a sensational balm that is just heaven for the Tootsies. May I call you Charlotte? 
Charlotte looks at Bunny, <coughs> her head angled as though she were trying to decode the anarchic scribblings of a child. You can call me Bunny, says Bunny, and he waggles his hands behind his head like rabbit's ears. A low, unpleasant chuckle escapes Charlotte's throat, and she says, you're kidding, right? I'm deadly serious, Charlotte. That's the kind of name I'd give to my rabbit. Charlotte softens and despite herself smiles and says, yeah, rabbit. But he sees the super toned muscle in Charlotte's thigh twitch and he thinks he sees, carried on the happy ozonic air, golden sparks of love jumping out of the legs of her pink toweling shorts. Emboldened, Bunny leans in and wiggles his eyebrows and says suggestively, Well, Charlotte, you know what they say about rabbits. No, I don't. What? Well, they're, um, well, you know. No, I don't know what they say. And then Charlotte adds something that sees the entire episode slip through Bunny's fingers like the string of a child's flyaway balloon. Does this routine actually work on the ladies, Bunny? Charlotte waggles her hands behind her head, mocking him, and Bunny feels a spike of umbrage worm its way through his bowels. You'd be surprised, he says, and before he can check himself, he winks at her. Charlotte shrieks with laughter and says, did you just wink at me? Bunny thinks, did I? Then feels her laughter scrape its fingers down his spine. Well, I might have said or I might just have something in my eye. What the fuck, he thinks, what the fuck? Charlotte howls and cups her hands over her mouth then points at Bunny and shouts, you are, you are beyond belief. Oh, so I've been told, says Bunny. Where have you crawled from, the tar pits? The what pits? You should be embalmed and have a sign hung around your neck saying extinct. I resent that, says Bunny. I take personal hygiene very seriously. But even as he says this, he can sense the faintest odor of flophouse sweat rising from his armpits. Not stink, extinct, like a dodo. Whoa, steady on, says Bunny, and with a kind of wounded awe watches Charlotte's features vulcanize before his eyes, the dry blonde hair taking on the appearance of a steel helmet, and her eyes a fierce, warring, metallic sheen. You ridiculous man. Hey, I'm just trying to do my job here. You sad, ridiculous little man, she says. What is this? Jesus, says Bunny, and he grabs handfuls of beauty samples and throws them into his case. Then Charlotte's face changes again, and without warning, she puts her soft, greased fingers on over Bunny's hand and says with a fair approximation of genuine concern, Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Munro. I've gone too far. I've wounded you. That wasn't fair. Bunny feels a sudden and excruciating pressure on his bladder. He holds up his hand and shakes it off as to ward off further comment. No, it's all right, I just need to use your bathroom. What, says Charlotte? Yes, yeah, says Bunny, I've been on the road all day. I need to go so much I can taste it. Charlotte shrieks with laughter and a nerve twitches under Bunny's right eye. Oh man, you're a class act. It's down the hall, she says, and pops a thumb in the, the direction of the bathroom. Charlotte's laughter follows Bunny as he quick marches down the hall. He feels a violent and boiling rage towards her, but is not completely surprised to see visions of her sparky vagina strobe before his eyes. He enters the bathroom in a fury, scrabbles at his flies, and passes a stream of urine with such puissance that it makes the bones in his face ache. A glaze of sweat covers Bunny's brow, and his quiff lies on his forehead as limp and insentient as roadkill. Bunny hears a renewed shriek of laughter coming from the living room and he bares his teeth. Fucking bitch, he says, and he pisses on her carpet. And then he pisses on her lilac-colored walls, and then on the rack full of magazines, <coughs> then on the hand towels, and with a grand flourish, he rises up on his toes and pisses on her toothbrush. <laughs> then he zips himself up, opens the door, strides down the hall, full of a renewed and unobstructed purpose, and says, all right, you want to buy any of this shit or not? I detect a note of hostility, Mr. Munro, says Charlotte, standing up from the sofa and rolling her head around on her neck in order to release some pent-up tension. Well, we fucking dodos get like that sometimes, says Bunny, and the corner of his eye flutters. 
Charlotte stands firm, hands clasped benignly in front of her, and says as if imparting a simple incontrovertible fact, for your information, Mr. Munro, Mr. Munro, I am a black belt in Taekwondo. Oh yeah, says Bunny, well I just pissed all over your bathroom. <laughs> you what, says Charlotte, taking a step closer. That's right, the walls, the carpet, your Hello magazines. You what, your fucking toothbrush, says Bunny. Suddenly and without discussion, Charlotte begins to jump up and down the balls of her feet. Her muscular arms relaxed and loose at her sides. Bunny notices that Charlotte is not wearing a bra, and that before his very eyes her nipples are stiffening and now jut through the thin cotton of her t-shirt, hard and fierce and unusually protracted. He sees, incredibly, what appears to be tiny cartoon sparks shooting from them, and he thinks for a sweet moment that maybe, just maybe, all is not lost. He feels his cock roar awake. Meanwhile, Charlotte Parnabar steps forward and with a solitary rabbit punch, busts from his nose. <laughs> there is an audible crack, a supernova of light, a geezer of blood, and Bunny tumbles backwards over the calico sofa and lands in a stunned heap on the floor by the door. Hi, says Charlotte. There is a great pumping of blood from Bunny's nose that splashes down his tie and his jaw yawns open and he makes a sucking noise like a fish. In slow motion, he allows his head to fall forward and watches the bright blood pool in his cupped hands and he says, not loudly, but with the purest kind of outrage, fuck. Charlotte continues to hop up and down and nipples as hard as bone. The foundations of Taekwondo are built on integrity, peace and respect. You ought to try some rabbit, man. Painfully, Bunny climbs to his feet, points one trembling finger at her and says, you horrible fucking slag. He says, you mad, ugly, diseased. And Charlotte Parnivore grins and swivels and tilts her hip to the side. Woo!